I know many of you are here to hear what I have to say about the day of the incident and what actually happened. I will speak to that now for the first time publicly. The weekend prior to Monday, March 2nd, I was attacked by JR both in my home and at a hotel at the county. I attempted to end my relationship with JR that weekend. And when I took a strong stance on that, he made it clear that he would not allow me to leave him. He first attacked me on that weekend at a hotel in Long Beach. A security guard came to our room and asked if I needed help. That security guard may have saved my life. When I returned home, JR came home with me and would not leave. He proceeded to keep me in my house, his prisoner throughout the night of March 1st. And through the early morning of March 2nd, I attempted to defend myself, but was no match for him. I began to fear and then believe that I was not going to survive this attack. JR left my house early on the morning of March 2nd, and I believed he was going to report to his probation officer. I believed at that time that his probation officer would, not, would notice the scratches I had left on him when I was attempting to defend myself. He was on probation for domestic violence, so I believed that the probation officer would notice the marks and arrest him for violating his probation, since he had no plausible explanation for why he had visible scratches on his body. To my shock, JR returned to my home that morning after his probation appointment. He was just angry as he was the night before and when I tried to prevent him from entering my house. He overwhelmed me and forced his way into my home. He then attacked me. I knew at some point that I was not going to survive this attack. I am a trained officer, have practiced martial arts, and have even boxed professionally. But JR's size and strength was too much for me. He was enraged and he made it clear that he was going to hurt me. And I feared he was going to keep his word and that he would actually kill me. He often told me that if he could not have me, nobody could. At that point on that morning, all I could think of was that I wanted to live and that I needed to do everything I could to see my son. <laughs> I will not give specific details, but I will say I fought for my life that morning. <laughs> when I saw JR bleeding, I was the one who called 911, even though JR paid me not to do so, saying his probation was going to be violated for this. When we were waiting for help to arrive, JR told me what to say to the police, and like always, I told the police what he wanted me to say. I am not aware that. This is what was the same statement that JR said to one of the people who arrived to render aid. I still mourn JR's death, which I know it's hard for people to understand. Even though he was a person who physically abused me, I, I did love him. As hard as it is for you to understand that, and until recently it was even harder for me to understand it. It is a fact of my life. I am grateful to my doctor who has assisted me through therapy when dealing with the trauma leading up to and including March 2nd, and also the effects of long-term abuse. I am starting to understand what I experienced, and more importantly now, how I can help others prevent it from happening to them. I was fortunate that much of the abuse I reported to my lawyer and his investigator that occurred during the course of my relationship with JR could be corroborated. I was surprised at how many people had seen so much. I do realize how difficult a decision it was for the district attorney to find that JR's death occurred during an act of self-defense. I realize that if my history of abuse at the hands of JR could not have been corroborated by the investigators on both sides of this case, and if investigators ignored or missed some of the evidence found in my home, that the DA may have reached a different conclusion. What I have learned through the case through this case is that a good investigation is not one motivated by a desire to convict a suspect. It is motivated by a desire to find the truth. I will take 
that lesson back to me when I resume my career in law enforcement. I want to thank all my family and friends and fellow officers who've expressed their support and off offered me help during this time. I want to thank Ron and the people of his office for their guidance and advice and Ron's investigator, Ching Thayer, for his efforts in investigating my case. Thank you so much. I put a great deal of trust in these people and I'm grateful for their support. As for the future, I will attempt to get my job back. I will do so by attempting to educate my department on the effects of domestic violence and how they can do more to help employees who may be victims of abuse. It is also my desire to be the voice for the women who are suffering at the hands of their abusers. And maybe I could play a role, a small role in preventing other women from suffering what I have experienced these last few years. I plan on helping others who are silent victims of abuse to let them know that there are people who will listen and that they can break the cycle of violence by getting help.